The Unshackled Waves, episode 210. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. We haven't had a show dedicated to American politics for a while, so I thought it was about time we got up to date. President Trump is going through somewhat of a difficult period as the Robert Mueller-led special counsel investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election has led to Trump's former campaign chair, Paul Manafort, his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, and his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, now facing jail time. Trump is still in a battle with Congress to secure the $5 billion in funding he needs to build the US-Mexico border wall, which was his key campaign promise. Add to that, Democrats take control of the House of Representatives next year and can use their subpoena power to obtain documents from the Trump administration. And he has recently lost his Secretary of Defense, James Mattis. To discuss all this, I welcome back to the show, The Unshackled's Deputy Editor, Emilio Garcia. Emilio, welcome back to the show. Hey Tim, thanks for having me back. Now you're about to fly out for Mexico during the the Christmas and and New Year break. You're going to be on the the other side of the wall. Well, there is no wall at the moment. (laughs) There is no wall. I don't think it's going to get built. Sorry, sorry to disappoint Tim. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be on the other side of where the wall is supposed to be built. Uh, We'll we'll see that. I'm leaving in a couple of days. Uh, A little disclaimer for your audience. There is a huge storm right now in Sydney. And uh, so I apologize if you hear any uh, thunder or any sounds of rain. Nothing I can do about it, really. Uh, Sydney is giving you a good farewell. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, super depressed. The the Trump train juggernaut had been going well for, for so long. He'd been having all of these great victories. But now, ever since the, the midterm elections, there's all of these sort of so- sore spots that have developed over time and now really starting to grow outward. And right. that's definitely the case with the, the Robert Mueller special counsel investigation, which mm-hmm. was supposed to be into alleged Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election. But right. it's basically its strategy, and I'm not convinced that this is how you should properly conduct a investigation mm. but he's gone right. after all of the the people close to trump uh, right. a lot of them have been charged with criminal offenses and they then they all cooperate with the the Mueller investigation so it's right it, 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 it's quite a I, i'd say convoluted strategy so one of the things that is really disingenuous about both sides of the coverage of the Mueller investigation is the assertion that we know anything really about what's going on. What we know about the Mueller investigation is purely based on the indictments that the Mueller investigation has uh, had as a result uh, of their of their uh, work. So we haven't seen any leaks. We haven't seen any real um, statements from Mueller himself. So we can piece the different uh, results together and come up with some something of a of a conclusion but we don't really know what he's doing and in fact Mueller did tell uh michael cohen you know back <laughs> way back when that donald trump was not the subject of criminal investigation so we actually don't know how unfair fair uh Mueller is being to trump or if these indictments that have these people cooperating with the investigation are directed at trump what we know is that there have been people close to Trump that were doing things that are technically illegal, some less moral than others. But as to what that means, we don't know yet. And remember that it was actually Congress that gave permission to the Trump, uh, to the to the Mueller uh, investigation to expand outside of just uh, Russian interference. That was that was that was Congress. That was the Republican Congress. They gave them permission. So that's also a really important piece of context. Now, let's look at the people around Trump who've mm. uh, become foul of this investigation. Actually, yeah, the Boy serious... Scouts of America. <laughs> 
a serious criminal charges laid against them and probably the the most high profile one well one it is confirmed is actually going to prison is michael mm. cohen who was trump's personal lawyer now as far as i can tell his job as the lawyer was to pay hush money to women that Trump had had affairs with, uh, most famously mm -hmm. uh, Stormy Daniels. Now, he's been convicted on campaign finance uh, violations, uh, tax right. evasion, and also lying to Congress. He's been sentenced right. to three years in prison and a $50,000 fine. I think he'll be more concerned about the three years in prison. <laughs> and Trump has tried to distance himself from Cohen saying, I never instructed him to do anything uh, illegal. I just thought that he was he was doing his job. He'd know to, to do his job. And Cohen has sort of said, oh, he, he, he's basically said, I, I'm going to pay for my sins now. Uh, yeah. I've really I've really done the, the wrong thing. And it, yeah, it's only a a couple of degrees separation from from trump himself because this was trump's right. personal lawyer mm. i mean there's so much to unpack there really so what we know there's there's one crime that uh, well two crimes that that he committed that are directly tied to trump so the first is the the campaign finance violation which is still arguable i, I understand that he pleaded he, he pleaded guilty to doing it but on trump's side the illegality of it is is uh is still debatable but then when it comes to the uh, negotiations on the Trump Tower in Russia, that's where that's where he was actually lying to to the people that were that were questioning him. And so that's actually that's actually serious. That's actually bad. He, he, he claimed, first of all, that these were preliminary talks that had no uh, no real legs in reality. They were just basically having a conversation that turned out not to be true. Then it turns out, then he said, well, fine. I mean, we were talking about it seriously, but there was no uh, no, no documentation. Donald Trump certainly didn't know about it. Then we know that there was actually a, a letter of, of intent. And then, okay, well, yes, there, there was documentation, but Donald Trump still didn't know about it. Now we know that Donald Trump signed it. So all these things, it turns out that actually Cohen, Cohen did have a, a, a streak of lying to people that you cannot lie to because it's a crime to lie to them. So that's really bad. Uh, and and then finally, he's just apparently a criminal. I mean, uh, on the side that he's just evading taxes and taking a lot of money and buying himself ostrich suits, uh, that's just him on his own being being a shady guy. No one ever thought that Michael Cohen wasn't a shady guy, though. So yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's bad. It definitely doesn't look good to have uh, the longtime personal lawyer for Donald Trump, for the president of the U.S., going to jail for so many really shady things. But as to how this reflects criminally on Donald Trump again doesn't look good, but we're not sure. Uh, we're not sure if it if it if it has any real negative consequences legally on the president. Now another former Trump White House official. There, there mm. there's quite a lot when I say that. You're wondering, well, it's guess who? Exactly. Uh, Michael Flynn, who was the former mm. National Security Advisor. I think he lasted was it 17 days i think his record yeah. was eventually beaten by anthony Scarab scaramucci scaramucci now he um, played guilty to willfully and knowingly making false fictitious and fraudulent statements to the fbi which and, and this is where a lot of trump's people seem to get into trouble they seem to think that they can get away with lying to the fbi i mean it's 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 not a minor governmental organization i mean it's the cheap cheap <laughs> peak law enforcement body and so when you sort of play games with them they don't really like it <laughs> well the, the thing especially with michael flynn in, in the lies that he was telling in in his contacts direct contacts with uh with foreign nationals was that it wasn't even entrapment which is what 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 a lot of people are talking about the uh, the Mueller investigation wanting to do to Trump, which is basically when you put them in a in a perjury trap, which essentially means that you question someone over and over on a bevy of questions, and if there are any inconsistencies that may come out just to, from from bad memory or from a slip of the tongue, they can count that as being a lie and then indict you. Which which people say you know it's just unethical you know people are going to say things that aren't 100 percent accurate because memory isn't 100 percent accurate and so people had a lot of complaints about that but 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 in flynn's case that's not the case like you would know if you're in constant contact with foreign nationals and uh, just uh, go go over what first of all why he resigned and why the the fbi <clears throat> took an interest with him for our audience just to refresh right 
So initially, the, the, the assertion was that he had not had any contact with foreign nationals, with uh, Sergei Kislyak, I believe it was. Uh, and then it turns out that they found out that he had had contact. And uh, I think Fox News uh, kind of joked about the fact that, uh, that uh, what was it, that he only talked about his, his uh, nieces and nephews with, uh, with the foreign, uh, with the Russian guy. Uh, that turned out not to be true. It turns out that actually there was a lot of very deep level work, a lot of work, a lot of um, conversations that had to do with directing certain initiatives within the American um, legal system. We don't know everything yet, or if we do, maybe I'm not as educated on, on the issue. But essentially what happened was <clears throat> Flynn was in touch with, the, with, with Russian uh, nationals. He didn't tell anyone. Then Trump found out, and then uh, Pence found out. And once Pence found out, that's when, uh, that's when they asked for his resignation. Essentially, yes. I mean, if you want to boil it down to its, its most essential, it's Flynn was talking to Russians, lied about not doing it, got fired for when it came out that he was indeed in contact with the Russians, and now he's facing uh, the, the penalties for that lie. Yeah, so it's basically, <clears throat> yeah, ever since he was appointed to the Trump administration, it seems to have been just one lie after another, and now it's yeah. gone to its most extreme conclusion. Now, he, he won't be sentenced until March uh, 2019. Right. And then there's also uh, Paul Manafort, who's the former Trump uh, campaign chair. Now, he was charged with, uh, and this is a, a long uh, list, uh, conspiracy to defraud <laughs> the United States, money laundering, fell into register as a foreign lobbyist, making false statements to investigators, and witness tampering. And he pled guilty to conspiracy to defraud the United States and, and witness tampering. Now, th this guy is, well, he, he was more a business partner of, of Trump. Uh, mm. he's, been, he's been around for, for, for many years, so he, he and Trump have, have had a uh, type of business and personal relationship. So Manafort uh, going down is, I, I'd say, probably the, the most major out of the three of them. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, arguably, arguably, yeah, that just because of, just because of, of the of the rap sheet, if you will, of, uh, of the many, many things that uh, that he was that he was that he pled guilty to essentially. Now, with a grain of salt, what we know is a pretty common, uh, not super ethical practice on behalf of prosecutors is to create far more like to, to attempt to prosecute on many more charges that are actually directly applicable to make sure that the burden of the law or the burden of fighting each and every uh, count that they're being charged with just adds to basically the the the, the incredible load of, of legal work that you'll have to do and essentially it might just make more sense to plead guilty and get a lesser sentence the art so of we... the plea deal yeah <laughs> exactly basically that, that that's uh that's how you could look at it I suppose it is. It is pretty damning. I'm not really. Um, I'm not really informed as to how that could have a direct impact on Donald Trump, legally. But I, I, I think one of the things that we need to understand is that the impacts of all of this could be far more political on Trump than than really legal. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Trump right now is not in a super strong position politically as it is, and having so many people that are that close to him all be going to jail for uh, criminal acts that happened while in his orbit, that's pretty damning. <laughs> that, I mean, it, for anyone, I mean, if, uh, we have to be honest, if this was happening with, with, uh, with Obama, if this level of, of, uh, of legal pressure was put on the people around Obama, we wouldn't be kind to him. We, we, that is, don't you agree with that? Yeah, well, given that, and this was a point made by Ben Shapiro, given that mm. uh, Trump's uh, opponents, they've just been so unhinged, so crazy, that mm. all of these very serious um, associations and accusations against him, they have gotten lost because, well, his yeah. supporters just say, oh, that's just the, the, the left trying to get Trump by, by any means necessary. necessary. I, no, that's so true. I mean, and, and the, the, the issue is, and they've been doing this since day one, is they turned off the volume to 11 
and now there's nowhere else to go. So, I mean, first of all, what what was the first thing when people were calling for impeachment? It was some, some I, I don't remember the first scandal. There have been so many. And it was something really insignificant. And everyone was calling for his impeachment. Uh, then, you know, when when they talked about that, he called African countries shithole countries. Yeah, which yeah. Yes, isn't very becoming. My God, like that. They, they treated that like it was Armageddon. Yeah, that and, sort of stuff. Mika Brigvinsky's yeah. like bleeding from a facelift. Like they just got <laughs> triggered over over that sort of stuff. When you have the media constantly telling you that every little thing that Donald Trump does is the end of the world, naturally, people are going to become numb to it. So really, no one wants to listen anymore to Anderson Cooper say that because Donald Trump called countries in Africa shitholes, which I don't know why people thought that was a big deal. I think they've been doing that for quite a while. It, it wasn't particularly... Uh, uh, egregious as compared to the way that people generally speak, well, then we're not going to take anything else seriously. That being said, that being said, it's not good. It's not good timing. And we're going to move on to talk about this in a little bit. But Donald Trump politically is in a really weak position right now. Well, I wouldn't say weak. It's fragile. He's in a very fragile position. And having, you know, his closest uh, confidant, some of his closest people go to jail is just it's just not good it's just not a good thing uh, so far all of trump's supporters and he has actually been gaining in in popularity among republicans mm. who were skeptical of him they just say oh well that's right. just trump derangement syndrome rearing mm -hmm. its head again uh you're only going after him because you know you think he's hitler and of course there, <laughs> there's been the whole npc meme where where it sums up all of the the left are saying orange man bad Orange man, bad. no, and the, the NPC meme, by the way, now is one of the most offensive things that apparently you could ever do. It's dehumanizing, racist, bigoted, uh, homophobic, uh, transphobic, uh, and just every type of phobia that you can get from a, a gray cartoon, apparently. But um, essentially, listen, Trump has been making some strides. There has been, you know, some the the, the economy is doing well foreign policy isn't doing too bad, things like that. And that's good. And so it, 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 it stands to reason that he would make some gains, but it's not going that well. I have to say it's actually not going that well. All signs point to some kind of recession in 2019, whether it's economic or just profit recession, that's, that's gonna have some impacts on Donald Trump's uh, ability to get uh, reelected because he's the economy president. That's one thing that everyone could could point to and say listen he might have a thousand things wrong with him but he has had good results that'll be very bad now he's talking about pulling troops out of syria and that's also not a great uh that's also not a great precedent to set now i know that you're not an interventionist but we remember what happened last time with a certain president who decided to pull troops out of a region where they were not ready to be pulled out and that's not ex that's not excellent either. Uh, so yeah, and no. Right now we're also have the the, the house coming in. Uh, they're gonna get his tax returns. God knows what's on that. I think if it wasn't anything damning, he would have released them already. So I mean, yes, he, his approval rating has had a slight uptick. But to say that there is not something that could affect him badly soon, I think that that's a stretch. Yeah, the New York uh, Attorney General State's office, mm. they uh, had a look into the, the Trump Foundation, which was supposed to Christ. be a charitable foundation, but donations went to not traditional charities as we would think of it, to, to basically <laughs> uh, f f feed the homeless, uh, mm. to provide running water overseas. It basically went into right. things that benefited Trump's personal business or political interests. Like there was a donation to the, the Boy Scouts in the year that his son was enrolled. Like in just... the exact amount for the entry fee. Yeah. Which is like, aren't you worth $10 billion? <laughs> Can you just pay it? But yeah, sorry, I, I interrupted. Go on. Uh, and, the, and there was another one where a charitable mm. donation was given to, to some public office, which, yeah. that's a new one for me. It's, well, listen, I think you're being kind. I know that you're, uh, you're on the Trump train. So what you're saying is we're not, he, you know, he's not giving money in the way in which traditional charities give money. It's like a little bit different. The difference is that traditional charities give to charity. They give to an end user for philanthropic, for philanthropic reasons. And Trump did it for himself, 
for his own reason. So yeah, I would agree with you that in that sense, it is not the traditional charity. Listen, the Trump, the Trump. Uh, I, I try, I try to be uh, moderate on Trump. I really do. I try not to be too much of a never Trump or a go crazy. But the Trump Foundation was an absolute joke, and it was an absolute way for him to use money without taxes for his own benefit. The best example, and I know people they, they've heard of this so many times, but it it bears repeating that he bought with money given to his foundation for philanthropic reasons bought two paintings, two enormous paintings of himself and then grabbed those paintings and put them like in his restaurants and in his building. And once people say, listen, you use charitable money to buy these things for yourself, he says, no, no, that's going to be used at some point for philanthropic reasons. And the Trump company is actually just holding those <laughs> those pieces of art for the charity. So it's essentially another contribution to the charity by having it, you know, up in Trump on Trump's wall, which I mean, don't insult our intelligence, man. I mean, that's that's just I mean, we we know that that's bullshit. Don't don't lie to us. So in that sense, listen, the New York attorney general is using some really inflammatory language. Some he, he I mean, she is just not being uh, forthcoming in, in the gravity of everything. But when it comes to the to the Trump Foundation, yeah, that that was that was a front for for just having money that he didn't have to pay taxes on, and it should be closed absolutely. Now let's turn to uh, Trump's policies, and of course his signature mm -hmm. campaign promise to, was to build a Great Wall by the U.S. Mexico border and have Mexico pay for the wall, and two years into his presidency, despite the Republicans having control of Congress during that time, he wasn't able to get funding for the wall, and now he needs to go through the, the Democrats. He needs $5 billion to build a wall, and then he threatened right. that, oh, if you don't agree to it, I'll shut down the government, which is silly politically, because if the government does shut down, you'll get the blame for it. Like, the Democrats can say, hey, yeah. like, yeah, sure, we'll be uh, complicit in that, but you're the one that suggested it. You'll be in trouble yeah. for it. And he, he's tried to say that Mexico will pay for the wall indirectly because he's mm. renegotiating NAFTA, uh, the North American Free right. Trade Agreement. It's now the uh, right. US-Mexico, yeah, Canada-America agreement. Right. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, the USMCA is basically... Um, I, 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 let, let me start from the beginning. So, the wall. Mexico was never going to pay for the wall. Mexico was never, ever going to pay for the wall. It made no sense. Even the people that were very strongly behind Trump on the wall during his campaign, the more reasoned people were saying, yes, let's build the wall, but no, Mexico's not going to pay for it. Why would why would a sovereign country pay for another country's infrastructure project? So that that's, you know, and I think that's something uh, that supporters were pretty comfortable with after a while. I think they said, listen, we want the wall. Mexico doesn't have to pay for it, but we want it. Fine. That's a legitimate point of view. I don't share it, but fine. If you think that that a wall on its own without other measures is is important, build it. Then he's first of all, I think he said that he needed fifteen billion dollars and he needed ten. Now he just needs five, right? And he said, Chuck and Chuck and Nancy, if you don't give me this money for the wall, I'm going to shut down the government. That's what he said. And he he was like, you know, I'll own it. I'll own it because this is so important and we need that money. And like he was just taking his hard stance, you know, this is what we elected him for, strength, whatever. Okay, then it turns out that, what, a day later, Sarah Huckabee Sanders goes on TV and says that, oh, we're actually not in need of those $5 billion. In fact, we'll probably find the rest of the money somewhere else. We just need a little bit of that money. And now they just avoided the, the shutdown by passing a bill that has less than 40% of the money that Donald Trump wants for the wall. That's that's a big loser. I'm sorry, but that I mean, he's not a master negotiator, and if he is, he's not doing it well because that was a blunder. He he took a hard stance, and then he got nothing in return for it. So that's uh, that's just not 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 a good. And if he's building good, building his signature policy with forty percent funding, you 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 sort of suspect it might be a shonky job. I mean, that the wall could be easily to 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 knock down or make holes in. I mean, it wouldn't yeah. fill you with confidence. Well, the, the wall in itself, and I talked uh, I talked on another podcast recently about this, is that my largest issue with the wall was not so much the wall as a concept. It's just that a wall, a simple border wall, 
on its own doesn't do anything. If you have all these examples of all these places along the U.S.-Mexico border and in other countries that had all these dramatic reductions in, in uh, illegal immigration once they went up, it wasn't the wall on its own. The wall was a physical barrier that helped in several other uh, uh, what would you call it, implementations of security measures. So you had uh, you had more presence on the on the border, you had uh, more surveillance, you had drones, you had all these things, and that helped. So that that's my issue with the with the Donald Trump wall just to begin with. So right now, let's say he gets the five billion dollars and you know he has two point five billion from the Democrats and five billion that he's going to get from the military. And it's just a wall. Currently, there's only 30,000 people uh, that, that, you know, uh, what do you call them? Agents, uh, border security agents. That's not enough. So the wall isn't going to do anything. People are just going to go under it. They're going to go over it. They'll drill walls in it, uh, holes in it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, 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 it, it's a big loser. I mean, really, I don't want to, I don't want to be kind to Donald Trump right now. I was very impressed with his initial performance. He, he proved me wrong on a lot of things. Now he's losing. Like, don't don't get it twisted. Like, what he's saying right now that he won, he didn't. He didn't win. He lost completely, utterly. You should go to the where the wall's going to be and just <laughs> jump on either side just to to <laughs> make a point. Yeah. Well, listen. Like uh, the the one that I would be close to, which is the one in uh, in San Diego, I wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't go close to that wall. It's so well surveilled. There's, I, I don't know if you've ever been to, to San Diego or to California, but once you get it close to that wall, like, there, it's enormous and there's cameras everywhere and it's electro, electrocuted and, like, there's all of these border agents. Like, you don't go close to that. But that's because, again, there's other measures. It's not just a physical barrier. Go somewhere else. Like, just, oh, okay, well, there's some tubes. Like, we'll just climb over them or we'll go under them. It's not, you know, it's not a hard thing. So, yeah, listen. Um, if he builds that wall, if he manages to build the wall, that'll be that'll be helpful for his campaign in 2020. It's not gonna it's not gonna do much, I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it'll do much to curb illegal immigration. And on top of that, you know, you have you have the the house, and the house, I swear, is going to flood the Trump administration with all these investigations, and they're not going to be able to do much. And who knows what will come out during those investigations? It could be damning. So I repeat. Donald Trump, it's not looking good for him. And he might pull, you know, <laughs> we always say it's the beginning of the end. Everyone always says it's the beginning of the end, and it hasn't been so far. But, I mean, it's not looking good. It really isn't. And if Trump doesn't get the border wall built, I mean, as I said, it's his key campaign promise. If that's not fulfilled by 2020, then that, that's going to be a huge blotch against his re-election. I'll certainly right. call him out on the fact that, hey, you said you were going to increase border security you mm. haven't you haven't made good on your promises and it's actually been highlighted that there's been less deportations under trump's presidency yeah. than under the same period during obama and and That's coulter right. who was uh, one of trump's most enthusiastic uh supporters mm. uh, and coulter uh today she's really really good better than the ann coulter 10 15 years ago she said <laughs> that if the wall's not built the the trump presidency will have been a con and a joke and will have been taken for a ride basically yes i mean that's true again i uh, the, the the wall to me it seems for a lot of people is more of a symbolic issue really i mean they, they really care about immigration and everything but when it comes to the wall itself they just like it just they just want it you know they just want the wall but listen donald trump um donald trump has had a lot of success a lot of it could be luck I mean, uh, the economy, for example, is doing fantastically well. Yes, that's true. But I mean, that's that's from implementing some pretty standard conservative free market principles. I mean, you reduce uh, you reduce regulations that are unnecessary, and you let people keep more of their own money. That's going to increase the, the 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 economy, of course, naturally. I mean, that that that's but that's something that has been a part of conservatism and, and the conservative platform for many years. It wasn't Donald Trump exclusively. So, I mean, that was good. But then again, you know, it's not like he, he broke some kind of, of rule and, you know, just did some incredible maneuvering that no one else would have come up with. And when it comes to the wall, again, he, he claimed that he was going to be zero tolerance on this, you know, the first day, you know, a thousand feet tall, whatever. I don't see it happening. And again, he, he keeps lying about it. He, he, he claimed that the wall was already getting built. 
Do you remember that? That he was like, oh, well, you apparently the into. wall has been extended in some areas, has made it, uh, it has been made a bit more concrete in some areas. So it's, it's, it, it, it's, it was maintenance. That was maintenance. I don't know. I, I, I mean, maybe, um, what's his face? This guy, he's not Tucker Carlson. He's like Tucker Carlson's retarded older brother. Um, is it Hannity? Yeah. Huge douche, that guy. Maybe he was like, you know, covering for him because he likes to, you know, pretend that, you know, Trump tripped over, you know, um, a stool or something and he pretends that that's the most amazing thing that's ever happened in the, in the world. But no, that thing that they said that, like, the wall was getting, like, better and bigger and already. No, that's not true. It was maintenance, okay? <laughs> they passed under Obama. Obama and Hillary Clinton uh, voted for it. They put some physical structures along the border and there's an ongoing budget to, you know, periodically attend to it you know it's, it's an infrastructure project you can't just leave it there to rot and that's what Donald Trump is saying is the construction of the wall it's bullshit <laughs> they went and they basically put a, covered a few holes from the immigrants that got through because there was no surveillance so they just you know punctured a hole in it but no that, that's just not true and there was also a few months back when when Trump was trying to get funding for his wall the first time around he basically mm. said to the democrats i'll give you everything you want with the the dreamers if you give me funding yeah. for the wall which is basically that's Im immigration reform that uh mm. not even the the democrats were willing to offer when they were in power that was that was actually one of the most telling moments for the democrats because it turns out, you know, I think that was actually a very savvy political move when it comes to, to Donald Trump, because he'd noticed that mo even Republicans, most of them think that the dreamers should have some legal status, not not citizenship, which was what Donald Trump offered. But he said, you know, they didn't have any any role in this. They were, you know, tiny when they got here. The oldest dreamers by the time they got here, I think, were seven or eight. Like they, they had no agency in that. And so a lot of Republicans were like, yeah, sure, like, you know, let them work, let them stay. And so Donald Trump went to the to the Democrats, knowing that they wouldn't play ball because it was cancerous for their image among their base, saying, you want 800,000 dreamers uh, legalized, I'll give you 1,300,000 as long as you give me the wall. And they and Nancy Pelosi went out and said, this is uh, a bill meant to make America white again. It's like, yeah, there's no way to make America white again, like legalizing 1.2 million brown people. Like That was such a load of shit on behalf of the uh, on behalf of the democrats but essentially i mean it, it's kind of multivariate in the fact that first of all john trump did want you know push that forward knowing that 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 democrats wouldn't do it because they just can't collaborate with trump because their base won't let them so that's one area of it and then the second area i suppose which is kind of um it's kind of bad is now when he's actually in a position to actually want to build it because you know 2020 is coming fast uh Suddenly, suddenly, it turns out that he's not such a hardliner anymore. Turns out that he, you know, he he's just bending to the to the will of the Democrats, and that's that's very counter to what people elected him to do. Well, let's talk about the Democrats now because they won mm. control of the House of Representatives in the midterm right. elections, and they can mm. use that power to subpoena documents from the the Trump administration. They can launch all sorts of investigations right. into to various aspects of how the Trump White House uh, operates. Right. But uh, for, for me, the, the this is going to be the Democrats' downfall, is that their leadership is still old and stale. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is speaker right. again. She's age 78. And the, the presidential hopefuls that they're talking about, former mm. uh, Vice President Joe Biden, he's 76. Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. well, two-time loser. I mean, I'm sure <laughs> Trump wants to run against her again. She's 71. Yes. And let's mm. not forget how frail she looked the last time. And then uh, Bernie Sanders mm. is 77. I mean, they haven't right. gone to the, the next generation. Well, we've, we've seen... Uh, the, 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 yeah, yeah. The, the, the next generation is Alexander uh, Ortega Cortez. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure, Everyone what? always has such a hard time with her name. It's very yeah. simple. It's Ocasio Cortez. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, because it's a uh, Hispanic name. Yeah, it's easier true, for you to for you to pronounce. <laughs> but yeah, we've we've seen the the future. So I guess hanging on to these older people, it might not be a bad thing. I, I mean, maybe. I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I I always try to. I, I hate to play devil's advocate and you know kind of poke a, a poke a hole in people's enthusiasm, but Bernie Sanders 
and Joe Biden, the two top guys currently uh, polling on the Democratic side, they're both already polling higher than Donald Trump for 2020. And yeah, okay, they're old. They didn't care that Donald Trump, you know, Donald Trump is the oldest president in history. He went he, in being- He was the, one year older than Reagan, so- Right, but he, he went in being the oldest president, like the, mo the, the oldest elected president in history. Uh, I don't know if that's the proper terminology. He went into office being super old, essentially. And, you know, Trump supporters didn't seem to care. I think it, it, it's more a matter of, of personality. And so, uh, you know, I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago on, on our other podcast, our newer podcast, uh, The Pop and Lock Report, where everyone says, like, oh, you know, uh, the, the, the blue trickle. It actually turns out that it wasn't a blue trickle. It actually turns out that, that after all the votes came in days later, that it actually was a blue wave in the House that they actually won most of the available seats and that it was actually, I mean, it was actually a complete run. I mean, the, the, the Democrats annihilated Republicans in, um, in a lot of, of places. So that's not a very good sign. And another thing is that, you know, there's this meme about how Hillary lost because she didn't go to Michigan. You know, oh, how stupid is she? If she, only she'd gone to Michigan. Right. The assertion is that if she had made one plane trip, she would have beat Trump. So it really wasn't a landslide. If she had made one flight, she would have won the election. So to say that Donald Trump is completely safe, I wouldn't go that far. Right now, there's rumors of Joe Biden going up with um, running with Beto O'Rourke, who is the guy who ran against um, against Ted Cruz in Texas, a Democrat, and got pretty close to winning, which, yes, granted, he didn't win. He lost, but he almost won in Texas a red state against Ted Cruz. I mean, to say to say there isn't a huge threat right now to Donald Trump is just disingenuous. Even if they're old, even if they're old, they, they pose a threat. The reason why I wouldn't say that, oh, Trump's in, in serious trouble now is because, mm. uh, and I'm, uh, we're gonna talk about it again, that the media and the mm. uh, progressive activists have said, for for months years that oh this is going to be the thing that's going to end trump's uh presidency mm -hmm. uh this was going to end uh trump's campaign yeah. yet he won the beginning uh, of the end yeah so even though like these uh his close personal people uh being or well, pleading guilty or being convicted of serious criminal charges is uh alarming there's mm. But there's something about the the Trump mythology that he just seems to be able to just keep going on and then having a significant victory like a couple of months later. I mean, yeah. let, let, let's not forget how symbolic the Trump uh, Kim Jong Un meeting was. Everyone right. thought that that was going to happen. Everyone thought Trump was going to create World War Three. He just he just finds it, finds a way out of what he's, te he's Teflon in a way. So, and I think everyone's very foolish to try and predict how the, mm. the Trump presidency is going to turn out. This is true. This is absolutely true. And I mean, it's just over and over again, it's been, you know, bombshell, the beginning of the end, uh, walls are closing in over and over and it hasn't happened. So true. So true. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, but you know, and, and what you're saying is true in the sense that, that, he has been able to dig his way out of these holes before. But here's the thing. If 2020 rolls around and there's a recession, the economy isn't doing that well, you know, we're, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a strong recession. It's not going to be 2008. It's probably just going to be, you know, a, a run of the mill, you know, recession. It happens. It's cyclical. And that's not going to help him. And if he doesn't have the wall, that's also not going to help. What if, what if he's flooded with investigations? What if, what if from, from, you know, the new year, to 2020 there are 10 ongoing investigations into all of these people they can't get anything done they're way too busy uh you know tending to their legal issues not to mention his his tax returns are probably going to come out which you know he promised he would show us like what are you hiding you said you promised that when you took office you would show them they're going to come out who knows what's on there i'm assuming something he doesn't like otherwise he would have shown it to us so what you're saying is correct in the sense that it, the, 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 the end has been predicted so many times. And I'm not saying that it necessarily is the end, but he's not coming in on a strong position anymore. He used to. He had everything going for him. The economy, ISIS, uh, foreign policy, Kim Jong-un, all of these things were just like more and more wins stacked on top of each other. Black and brown unemployment, that helped so much. But listen, without a strong economy and without two houses of Congress 
all of those wins are a, a hell of a lot harder to achieve. And so to say that, that he just, you know, he's going to find a way to dig his way out of it again, I God, I don't know. I mean, maybe, but, but it's, not, it's not sure. And he's definitely not in a strong position as he was before. I think that's, I think that's not a controversial statement. Well, regardless of what happens uh, next year, I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about and there'll be more twists and turns because, as you mentioned, the the mm -hmm. presidential cycle uh, starts again next year with we'll, we'll yeah. actually see the uh, the nice. Democrat uh, president, president, presidential primary uh, debates. And so that will mm -hmm. be uh, fun to watch. And then, of course, 2020 years is primary season. But uh, enjoy your, your time in Mexico, Emilio. Uh, stay safe. I will. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay in a very safe in two very safe parts of Mexico. It's, it's not all dangerous, so don't, don't worry too much about me. <laughs> and we'll see you in the new year. All right. Sounds great. Thanks so much. All right, everybody, that's the show for today. It's our last show before Christmas, so I hope you all have a merry and enjoyable Christmas. The Unshackled will be active over the end of year and summer period, and I have several interesting upcoming episodes of the show for this period, so stay tuned. Our annual Unshackler Awards for 2018 are now open for voting. We have 10 award categories with 10 nominees in each, with the winners announced on Australia Day by our senior editor, Damien Ferry. Voting is open for the Regressive, Patriot, Unshackler and Cuck of the year, so make sure to have your say. Go over to the unshackle.net slash unshackler awards. We have got a big start to 2019 with three Australian tours happening in February. There is the Deplorables tour, which still hopes to feature Gavin McGuinness, Tommy Robinson and Milo Yiannopoulos, hosted by Penthouse Australia. Then there is Dr. Jordan B. Peterson's Return to Australia with special guest Dave Rubin and also Dr. Stephen Hicks' first visit to Australia, hosted by True Arrow Events. As I've mentioned before, we are still surviving the, the Patreon purge at this stage. You can still pledge over at patreon.com slash the unshackled. And we are also still on PayPal, which our link is paypal.me slash the unshackled. We also have our premium membership option on our website for a more uh, secure form of supporting The Unshackled, which is at theunshackled.net slash support options slash premium membership. Another way to support our work is by buying some right-thinking merchandise at uprightmarket.com. You score some snazzy gear as well as supporting our work, so make sure you check it out. So thanks once again for your company. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next show. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.